Cholesterol is a waxy substance found in your blood. Your body needs cholesterol to build healthy cells and high levels of cholesterol can increase your risk of heart disease. For this month's Health Check, I'm joined by Dr. Michael Cheshire to learn more about cholesterol. Dr. Cheshire, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you. Of course. So the first thing that I do want to ask you, for anyone that may face the issue of high cholesterol, can you just tell us a little bit about how that happens, the process? Okay. Well, I think it's important to understand what cholesterol is. Mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, it's a waxy substance in the blood, um, but it um, has some essential functions. And mm -hmm. so cholesterol is an important factor in our uh, cell membrane development, and mm -hmm. it's also used in the formation of certain hormones in the body. Right. But um, it only takes a very small amount of cholesterol to fulfill that function. Mm -hmm. So any elevation in cholesterol can be a risk factor for the development of hardening of the arteries or atherosclerosis mm -hmm. or plaque development, and that can lead to heart disease and stroke. Absolutely. And so can you just talk about the different things, maybe if it's dietary, other stuff that leads to people to having high cholesterol? Okay. So high cholesterol can be genetically uh, mediated. And so it can be due to the way that your body is just built and designed. Um, you might have a, a difficult time in clearing cholesterol from your blood, which would allow the blood cholesterol to be elevated. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have uh, issues in the way that cholesterol is absorbed from uh, the gut, and that can affect your blood cholesterol as well. And it's also what we eat. Um, so some foods are higher in cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So foods that are high in saturated fat tends to elevate our blood cholesterol. Absolutely. And so I do want to ask too, for people that may be dealing with this already or, you know, might have fears that this might be happening shortly in their life, when would be the best time to approach a doctor and ask for some advice or maybe could just get checked out? Well, there's various guidelines on when to begin mm -hmm. checking cholesterol. Uh, some guidelines would recommend checking cholesterol between the ages of 9 and 11 in children. Um, certainly, if there's any family history of heart disease, I would strongly recommend that we begin those screenings early on in childhood. Uh, for adults, all adults should be screened for risk factors for heart disease, and that can include cholesterol. Mm -hmm. uh, once we begin the, the checks of cholesterol, you'd want to repeat that every three to five years just to make sure that we're keeping an eye on those levels. Um, it's very important that once people have their cholesterol checked, that they are talking to a practitioner, looking at what those cholesterol numbers mean in light of their entire, um, entire um, risk factor package in terms of, of uh, what they have going on for heart disease risk. So that includes their blood pressure, um, their weight, their right. uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. and so forth. Absolutely. And so I do want to ask too, we talk about medications and different things. What kind of things are done to prevent high cholesterol and what medication maybe people prescribed if they were to, you know, be told that they have this? Yeah. Well, it all starts with lifestyle modification. So it's very important if you have high cholesterol that you make some changes to lower that without medication. Mm -hmm. So a uh, healthy diet, um, exercise can be beneficial. Absolutely. Um, then you're going to um, try to address any other risk factor that's there. If you smoke, you need to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. If you're sedentary, you need to start exercising. Right. There's things that we uh, know that we should do. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, we do use medication to lower cholesterol. Um, we generally will start with a statin medication. Um, we know that they're very effective for lowering cholesterol. Uh, they also reduce inflammation, which mm -hmm. is a driver for atherosclerosis. So they're very effective medications. Uh, for most people, they're well tolerated and safe. Uh, there can be some side effects to statins. So it's important as you start those medications that you talk to your provider, you understand what their risks and benefits are. Um, and we start those medications in light of your risk for heart disease. Mm -hmm. So we know that statins are most effective in patients that have higher risk for heart disease. Those that have a lower risk for heart disease may not even benefit from being on a medication. Right. And so you talk about statins, and that sounds like obviously it's a very important medication for anyone with high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Now, are there things that you guys would use if, let's say, statin, does that not maybe work in some scenarios? What exactly is that process yeah. then? Uh, clinical lipidology is a very exciting field, <laughs> uh, and uh, that's why I'm in it. Um, there are newer medications being developed um, continually. We mm -hmm. have lots of medications in development and newer medications that have come to market uh, fairly recently that help people that have had issues with statins. Um, so first of all, if somebody had an issue with a statin, mm -hmm. uh, with some intolerance, uh, whether it be muscle pain or, or, or something more severe, right. um, we can always look at changing from one statin medication to another statin medication. Um, for each of our statins, they're metabolized slightly differently. 
And so just because uh, somebody had an issue with one doesn't mean they're going to have an issue with another one. So we like to try the different statins in light of those uh, metabolic differences. We can also re-challenge statins at a lower dose, mm -hmm. and that can sometimes be well tolerated. We'll also look for other factors that could be uh, you know, affecting that in terms of other medications or diets uh, that people are on that can affect the statins and how they're metabolized. So beyond the statins, we have um, other oral medications. Mm -hmm. Azetamibe is a very common one that's been around for a long time. Uh, we have uh, good evidence that's effective of, uh, in, in terms of reducing cardiovascular risk in patients that have had a heart attack or stroke previously. Uh, we can also use that for primary prevention in those patients that have not had a heart attack. Uh, we will use that in addition to statins, but we can also use that alone if we needed to. Uh, we have a medication called bimpedoic acid, which mm -hmm. is another newer medication. A lot of people haven't heard of that, but it's an oral medication that works along the same pathway of statins, but um, in a different part of that pathway. And so it's really designed for people that have had muscle issues with statins right. that can take this medication and have a, a similar benefit uh, without those side effects. And then beyond that, we have injectable, injectable medications mm -hmm. that work in, uh, in different ways um, that are very targeted medications. So we use uh, medications that actually affect uh, RNA messaging um, or uh, we'll use monoclonal antibodies to inhibit a specific protein uh, related to the uh, metabolism of cholesterol. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like there are so many different ways that you guys are able to yeah. address this issue if people are facing it. Now, before I let you go, is there anything else about high cholesterol or maybe ways to lower your cholesterol that you would like to share with the Mid-Ohio Valley before I let you go? Okay. Well, when we talk about medications, it can be mm -hmm. complicated. There's a lot there. But just to keep things basic, um, um, everyone should have cholesterol monitored uh, at, during their lifetime. Right. Um, and that should be um, in light of their overall cardiovascular risk. Mm -hmm. And so that takes a, a discussion with the provider. So um, make sure you know your numbers, make sure you're discussing that with the provider, um, that you have an understanding of what your cardiovascular risk is, and then make a plan with your provider to work to lower that cardiovascular risk through lifestyle modifications and then medication if needed. If you're treated with medications for cholesterol and you've had difficulties, so if you can't tolerate your medication, or if the medication has been ineffective for you, mm -hmm. then it's time to seek additional help. You can talk to your provider about seeing a clinical lipidologist or a cardiologist or somebody with a little bit more expertise in managing those medications and those conditions. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Cheshire, thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge on this yeah. topic. You certainly are an expert in this field, and we're happy to hear, have you here in the Mid-Ohio Valley doing your thing. Okay. Thank you so much. Of course. When we return to Mid-Ohio Valley, we'll have one last look at your forecast. Stay with us.